I asked a bunch of people abroad what places and cities they knew in Russia. Uh, I know Siberia and Moscow. Moscow? Uh, <laughs> that's all. As it turns out, the majority of people couldn't name more than one or two cities of the biggest country in the world. Moreover, some people claim that Russia is a land of snow, farms and nothing else. There are, there are nothing? Farms, I guess. Lakes and ice. I, I don't know if people live there. I, I, I don't think so. After being fed up with this kind of answers, I've decided to set off on a trip to discover our huge country, Russia. I've already ice skated on the ice of Baikal in Siberia, lived in barrels on Mount Elbrus, and this time I've decided to discover the longest mountain range of Russia, the Urals. Let's see what's there beyond Moscow. While we were driving on our way, we saw something really interesting. There is an obelisk nearby the road, which is devoted to the border between Asia and Europe. So Urals are neither Europe or Asia. This is the border. Look, now my right foot is in Asia and the left foot is in Europe, I heard many foreigners say that Russia is Europe, but it's not. We live in Eurasia and our culture is a mix of European and Asian. And if you live here for some time, get to know our people, you'll see that we're not European, we're different from their culture, but we're not Asian as well. We're a mix and I would love to say that we have the best of both worlds. Also nearby the road I found this tree it says that it's a tree of loyalty and happiness is this a tradition to put lockers like this on trees or on bridges in all the countries let me know in the comments i don't know what a mask is doing here cool now it's time to go back to the car We will discover Taganay, the national park of the southern Urals. I drove here from Yekaterinburg, now we're at Chelyabinsk region and it took us around four hours. The Urals are a mountain ridge that runs from north to south through western Russia, from the coast of the Arctic Ocean to the northwestern Kazakhstan. This mountain ridge forms the conventional boundary between Europe and Asia. On our way, we passed several other cities of Russia. And you know, all the cities look exactly the same. The same supermarkets, the same cafes, the same buildings. In 1957, there was uh, Khrushchev's economic reform when they built these Khrushchev buildings. So in every city, all the buildings look the same, these gray blocks. If you love to discover cities, it's Moscow and St. Petersburg, where you can visit different museums or see this architecture. But other cities, I wouldn't say there is anything interesting, at least for me. You're traveling, but they all look the same, these Khrushchev blocks. So I prefer Moscow and St. Petersburg or very small cities where you can see this details of the Russian culture and this traditional cuisine, etc. Otherwise, it's about the nature. The nature is amazing and that's what we're gonna discover. In the Urals, there are many peaks that you can climb. I will climb the so-called two-headed hill, which is the southern peak of Taganay. 
On the internet it says that the name is the Biceps Hill. It's not that high, 1043 meters. Several weeks ago I climbed Elbrus, the highest peak of Europe in the southern Russia. You can watch my vlog. So this one should be easy, I hope. In Russian we also say вообще easy. At first we need to walk around 200 steps. <laughs> Какие здесь животные? Но no. <laughs> я про животных ничего не знаю. Я только знаю, что здесь около 750 видов растений. Скажи, есть пять видов птиц? Ну, медвежата тут. Что, лисички, <laughs> волки, рыси, ну и прочие такие. <laughs> There are actually many animals. Она писает еще. Она боится. Привет, привет тебе. Привет, привет. Дай лапку. А я на заброд. Ну. Ловишь? Пись, пись, пись. Пушка. Так вот. Смотри, какой симпатюшка. The ants. Excuse me, please. Во. No. Во. О. Муравей. Русский. Русишь муравей. <laughs> О, стойку боевую сделал. Вау. Wow. На муравьиной кислоты попробовать? <laughs> На, иди кушай. Нет. Кушай, кушай, кушай. Это вкусняшка. We finished with the steps and now it's gonna be the most difficult part. It's actually becoming steeper and steeper. Ух ты! Какая-то вечеринка. Медленный выдох через рот. The name of the park Taganai in the Bashkir language, one of the languages of Russia, means moon's tripod or tripod for the moon. And there is a legend why it's named so. The legend is a bit long, so I will leave it in the description of the video. We're almost at the peak and now we're gonna climb there. The two-headed hill has two peaks. One of them is named Feathers and the second one Sheep's Forehead. Don't ask why. We always have these strange names. And I climbed two feathers. And actually it's pretty scary here. But breathtaking views worth it. The Ural Mountains aren't high, the highest point is around 1900 meters, but geologists suppose that milliard years ago they used to be the highest mountains in the world, even higher than Himalayas. But they're also one of the oldest ones in the world. Their age is estimated to be 4.2 milliard years, and our planet's Earth age is estimated to be 4.6 milliard years. So. You can imagine how ancient the Ural Mountains are. Endless forest. And someone's legs. The most difficult part is behind. I already reached the steps, we're going down. and. People told me that there is lots of paranormal activity in Taganay. For instance, uh, at the peaks of three brothers, there are no animals, no insects, and no living creatures at all. And people try to avoid that area because they say that if they go there, they have unreasonable panic attacks and something happens. And also the electronic devices there discharge very fast and don't work. People say so. But I hope that my camera works, right? Oh, we came back to the camp. My legs are gonna say no. My knees are gonna say no. I gotta sit somewhere. Oh, it was so hard for the knees to go down. And this is the most famous stream in Taganay, Belikruch, or the white stream. The water is slightly mineralized and it's said that it's softer than the melted snow and very tasty, delicious, healthy, clean, etc. Oh, and very cold. 
even in summer it wouldn't go higher than plus four degrees here is the camp the name of the camp is also the white stream oh, so crowded uh, i believe because this year we are not allowed to travel abroad so everyone is here oh my gosh Food, some food. What do we have? Oh, field all kitchen. For Russian, Russian вкусняшка. Russian вкусняшка. We will be going back to Yekaterinburg. Look how many cars here at the parking lot. I don't know if there is always so many people or only because of the pandemic. Usually Russians go for their vacation to Turkey, Egypt, Vietnam, ah! or any warm place to swim in the sea and to lay on the beach. But uh, now everyone is traveling in Russia. By the way, let me know in the comments where do you usually go for vacation in your country or abroad? If you go abroad, which countries do you choose? That's really interesting to know where people go for vacation. Hey doggy! Oh. I'm already on my way back to Yekaterinburg. We drove for two hours. We have two hours more. Right now we're in the middle of nowhere. We always have such cafes in the middle of nowhere, nearby the road for people who travel because distance in Russia between cities is huge. While we were driving in the car, I was looking in the window and at this nature and reflecting on what I saw today and thinking that in Russia we have so much natural resources. Why aren't we developed as a country? Some countries as Arab Emirates or Arab Emirates or Singapore, they don't have many sources, but they are very developed and their government does everything for their people and they live a good life but even though i live in moscow and i'm used to this high standard of life i understand that the most part of russia isn't like moscow and today we were passing so many cities and i saw how poor they were and there were so many almost destroyed buildings very old houses and also many people just left those cities for bigger ones or to Moscow and I don't understand why can't we take all these sources we have and become more developed and ensure that the whole country lives well not only Moscow this is really sad but at the same time I don't love to blame the government for everything I think that every single one is responsible for his own life and we should do our best to improve the environment around us and to do our work well to be the best professionals we can at whatever we do uh, these were my thoughts in the middle of nowhere in russia let me know what you think about this, what it's like in your country. Are you satisfied with uh, how everything in your country works? Let me know. I hope that I will successfully get back to Yekaterinburg, edit this vlog and see you soon, I guess. Пока-пока!